Did you know that over a million Americans are dying annually of just heart disease and cancer alone? Do our doctors know the cause? Join us for the next 30 minutes of eye-opening science. Hello, my name is Janelle Jones, and I have been on the, five, the phase one diet for about five weeks now, and it has changed my whole feeling of how I feel. I felt like I had the, uh, kind of like the sleep coma thing, uh, sugar diabetes symptoms coming on, and after five weeks, I do not feel like that at all anymore. I'm feeling so much better in my body, and I'm excited to um, continue this, and welcome to Know the Cause. Janelle, that's amazing. 15 pounds in a short period of time, and that was taped months ago. I bet she's lost a lot of weight now. Today we're going to address why do medications, surgeries, injuries cause weight gain? Why do you think? This show is called Know the Cause, okay? Then also, Dr. Roby Mitchell and his friend uh, Dawn are here to talk about vaccination injury. Dawn's son had a shot at five weeks old and was injured. Let's talk about some of these incidents that happen after we take vaccines. Kyle Drew is here. Hey, hey. Oh, right here, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle and I are going to do, this is interesting, yeah. a woman had a lot of health problems. We wrote some of them down behind us. Kyle brought in supplements. We're going to talk about the importance of diet and supplements when you have all of these health problems. This diet first, good. diet yeah, first. This is going to be good. <laughs> and then finally, can you drink lime juice and offset the craving for cigarettes? Susie said so yes. All that and more on today's Know the Cost. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to open up today's show answering a viewer's question. Uh, she writes, hi Doug, I'm a female Know the Cause viewer. I have a lot of issues, health issues. What is the difference between using supplements and your phase one diet? Folks, there is nobody better to answer supplement questions, I believe, in the United States than Kyle Drew. He's got a degree in chemistry. As a little boy, he loved, loved hanging out in health food stores and reading books and so forth. I'm a so dork, you, right? <laughs> he knows a lot about this. That's right. I'll tell you what, uh, this is a good question. It's one a lot of people ask. And the fact of the matter is that diet is always first. This show is a diet first philosophy. What I like to think of with diet is let's prevent. Let's prevent all of these slew of things from happening in the first place. But what if somehow something slips through? That's when I like to use supplements. Let's start with the first thing, the headaches. Headaches can be caused by a lot of things. Obviously, we're going back to the fungus and mycotoxin link, phase one diet. But what do you do if you've already gotten one? In general, what I like to think of first, spices. This is called curamin. It's but one thing. I'll show you another one. This is called Migra X. And there are several others that I brought here, but all of them are basically spices. And so what I'll put on the board... That's a good idea, spice. Spice, yeah. oops, spices. And in particular, things like curcumin, things like boswellia, which is frankincense. These are great anti-inflammatories. Next thing, she mentioned psoriasis. I've had a huge problem with psoriasis mm -hmm. in my life. The first thing I'm going to put is this. You know what that is? Uh, yes, that's your sun. Sunlight. Mm -hmm. I think sunlight is going to be your friend, even in some tanning booths, if you do it for a short period of time, as well as fish oil. Hugely anti-inflammatory, nourishes the skin, does a ton of stuff. Joint pain. You know our friends from Flexin, right? Uh, the Flexin has the glucosamine. It has the CM8. It has a number of things in it that I think are going to be hugely helpful for you. So always remember flexin, but also think about something that we will call HA, which is hyaluronic acid. That gives cushion to the joints. It makes you feel better. Oh, by the way, your hair, skin, and nails are going to improve as well. How about toenail fungus? You know, the thing I like best, about, and I didn't bring it, but I like tea tree oil. 
mm -hmm. for toenail mm -hmm. fungus. It doesn't go away quickly, by the way, guys. You gotta soak it, soak it, soak it, soak it, soak it, but I think that tea tree oil is the premier toenail fungus. Vicks VapoRub. Many That's people say because of the camphor oils and so forth, it's all true. being antifungal, that Vicks VapoRub, but it doesn't happen immediately, like Kyle says. It can take six months or so after you get out of the shower, blow dry the affected nail, and then put a little coating of either tea tree oil or, uh, or, or Vicks, Vicks VapoRub. I think, yeah. I think you're right on top <clears throat> of that. So tea tree oil, Vicks Vapor Rub, heartburn, okay? I think that most heartburn is a deficiency of stomach acid, not an overabundance of stomach acid. So the first thing that I think of is actually, I'll put it over here, is HCL, which is hydrochloric acid. Sometimes you'll see it called papain, but, what, but it gets rid of the papain if you have heartburn. And ACV, Apple cider vinegar, Scott will show you that. This one is Bragg's, but, uh, but I like the kind that have, has this stuff at the bottom and you shake it up, just put a tablespoon in, drink it down. You can mix it with things like stevia, a little lemon juice, it tastes really good. It's fantastic. A tablespoon in water? I with think in little, water yeah, or too. straight up, but in yep. water is the best way to do yep. it. <clears throat> Halitosis, uh oh, that's why Doug and I are standing mm -hmm. so far apart. Uh, but I think <laughs> that halitosis is something coming up from the inside. So I always say probiotic first, okay? Yep. Always yep. start with probiotics. But how about this one? Scotty, this is mega chlorophyll. Mm. Any chlorophyll will work, but chlorophyll is nature's mouthwash. Yep. Put it in, it really takes care of the problem over time. And then, of course, we have things like this, the little peppermint drops with yes, chlorophyll in yes, it, which exactly. is, uh, we keep these around all the time, but it's natural and it works. Finally, shortness of breath. I grew up with something called asthma. I don't know what all shortness of breath you might be dealing with, but I'm, I've dealt with things where there's a thick mucusy thing going, mm -hmm. and it's miserable. There's a number of things that I like. This one is called ivy extract. Ivy extract. There's another thing, you get these combination formulas. This is from uh, Christopher's. This is a lung and bronchial formula. And one that I think everybody suffering with any lung issues needs is NAC. That's N-acetylcysteine. That, it, and I'm not gonna write all those down, but NAC is huge antioxidant for the lungs. But let's get back to diet though. Diet comes first, and for shortness of breath, you want the garlic and the onions, mm. things that whenever you eat them, you have to blow your nose and cough things up. That's thinning out the mucus, and that's restoring good health. The one amazing thing, Kyle, is that's a woman with all of these health problems. Yeah. Always get to a doctor first, you know that. But then tell your doctor you want to consider this, uh -oh. right? D-I-E-T. Diet is so important. Some of you will have those symptoms disappear just with diet. Then I love the supplements. Teach your doctor about the supplements and the diet that work for you. Thank you, Kyle. Awesome. Recognize fungus is in your food, in the air, and in your body now. Do you lack energy while having digestive problems, black nails, moving pain, sinus issues, stitching, scaling, and much more caused by fungus and mycotoxins? Respond by changing your diet to Doug's Phase 1 without sugar or white refined products. Add Doug's Duo containing NSC 100 Ammunition Extra Strength Glucan and NSC Caprolic to nutritionally help your immune cells find, kill, and remove fungus. Add the NSC Pro Probiotic to replenish good bacteria in the gut. That reduces acidity and fungal overgrowth. Resolve fungal issues by changing your lifestyle and eating right. Take an antifungal drug if necessary as directed. Supplement nutritionally with NSC 100 Extra Strength Immunition Glucan and NSC Caprylic. The potent fungus-fighting combo called Doug's Duo awaiting your call now. Which of my books fits you? When it comes to diabetes, this is a very complex problem, and yet the answer medically is to treat it. Folks, wouldn't it be great if we knew the cause? I think the fungus link to diabetes will be a real eye-opener for many of you. Of course, the diets are there, the prescriptive and the natural antifungals are also taught in the fungus link to diabetes.
You know, there's so many faces to fungi. As you hear on my show every day, there's a couple of books that through the years I've purchased. One is called Fungal Pathogenesis. Now, these are medical textbooks. I mean, the words in them are this long. But when you're in a crazy field like I am, it goes far beyond mushroom, right, or mycelia. These words are amazing, but fungal pathogenesis means pathogenic. Fungus can cause illness. Uh, this was a breakthrough book for me. I mean, it's not very old, maybe 10, 12 years old, but it delves in, and it's 300 pages, to the diseases that you can see when organisms that are alive are impregnated with fungus, the many faces of fungus. Another book I bought some years ago just because of the name. Sometimes I'll spend $200 when I have a good month on one of these books, Plant-Derived Antimycotics, written by these doctors. Think about that. Plant-derived antimycotic. Okay, what's antimycotic? Fungus makes a poison called a mycotoxin. Anything antifungal is antifungal. Anything antimycotic is antimycotoxin. So plant-derived, what do you think this book says? Again, 250 pages deep, deep science, much deeper. After I buy them, I order them online, I get them home. You know, you read the first chapter, your eyes are crossed. This is deep stuff, but basically it says, look, turmeric, curcumin, zinc, uh, garlic, these are plant-derived antimycotoxins. That's important. If fungus never got in your body, it couldn't deposit the poisons it makes, called a mycotoxin. Once it's there, sometimes taking antifungals isn't enough. You got all these deposits of poisons in your body. You can kill the fungus making them, but if they've already deposited all over your body, you're in deep with this stuff, and you've got to take antimycotics. So think zinc, think vitamin C, think curcumin. Uh, think garlic, think things like that, because plant-derived antimycotics says all of those things. Just great books and just my take. That's My Take is brought to you by NSC Immunition Products. Let your better tomorrow begin today with Immunition Products. Hello? Susan, where have you been? I've missed you. I've told you. I don't know what to do. It's been almost four days. You know this isn't healthy for our relationship. I'm so lonely, so lonely. I'm so lonely, I can die. I'm so lonely, so lonely. So lonely, I can die. Which of my books fits you? Are you or a loved one suffering with allergies, arthritis, intestinal problems, or depression? In the Fungus Link One book, the diet is there, the antifungals are there, and so is the information on those disorders. Marvin Frank Long of Long Life Unlimited are distributors of one of the best home cleaning degreaser products in the country called Orange TKO with Delemony. Also they feature many products in the Rafa Remedy line. Try this amazing product on your skin today. They also can serve you with 300 other products, many that are featured on Know the Cause. Ask for the Know the Cause special now by calling the number or logging on to longlifeunlimited.com. Remember, it's God given, people approved, and doctor recommended. Are you trying to quit smoking? Try lime juice. Seriously, an interesting study compared using fresh lime juice and nicotine gum in smokers. After 12 weeks, they determined that drinking fresh lime juice was more effective as a smoking cessation aid when compared to the nicotine gum. If you or a loved one is trying to quit smoking, try squeezing half a lime into a glass of fresh ice water and sipping it throughout your day. Don't give up. So I'm just imagining, you know, a cigarette and a glass of lime juice. <laughs> no, I don't need it. <laughs> you is know, it? I've day. never even heard of this. No, this I is brand new. Kyle, we had a friend who worked at a restaurant out here that we visit, yeah. and he had a patch on his arm, and he went ballistic. One of the side effects of that patch was anger, right. rage, etc. Right. And this happened to him. 
I mean, it's so amazing what people do to try and quit smoking, but I like the lime juice if that's going to wow, work. Oh, that's cool. Coming on the heels of this yeah. that Kyle and I just did, have a conversation with your doctor, friends. Always, always, always. I ended that segment by saying, talk to your doctor, teach your doctor. Doc, I've had these problems for a long time. Six years I've been coming here and getting your pills. Can we switch gears and try something else for 60 days? Mm. You see, supplements can be quite strong and quite useful, but use them wisely. On the other hand, medications have many, many side effects. Use them prudently. Mm. We all have to eat. Are you eating the right way or the wrong way? And I think that will have a lot to do with headaches, psoriasis, joint pain, toenail fungus, heartburn, etc. So, and, and by the way, I mm. used to have to use these inhalers for yeah. asthma, for example, and all these tar creams for psoriasis, mm -hmm. all of these things. And yes, I like doing the natural stuff instead of those, but what I like even better than that is being on a diet for the long term and remediating these pro problems for the long term so I'm not chasing symptoms with supplements. I don't want to be forever chasing symptoms with supplements if a diet can take care of it for me. And, and remember that sometimes a cortisone shot can be life-saving. Oh, it can. But then you have to dig in, why did I swell up like that? What was the cause? It wasn't a cortisone deficiency. Mm. Next question, Doug. How does surgery or medicine surgery and injuries cause weight gain? This was a mm. real question. I think it's really a good one, Kyle. That's a good because one. so many people write to us and say, look, I've been in the hospital for two weeks. Why can I now not lose weight? <laughs> or I broke my leg skiing or something like that. So let's touch on each of these. Medication and weight gain. Some medicines actually cause weight gain. It's one of the side effects. Know that antibiotics, the most prescribed medications of all time, make cows big. Mm -hmm. They can make you big. Stress also causes weight gain. Medications are nutrient robbers and without proper nutrition, weight gain is one of the many symptoms that medication takers may notice. And then we get over to surgery. Surgery leads to hospital food. <laughs> and we've all been, you know, in or around a hospital. I worked in one for a decade. Um, so think about the Jello link, okay? Uh, <laughs> antibiotics and recovery time. In other words, you're sedentary. With questionable quality food, antibiotics, and without exercise, weight gain is inevitable. And finally, what about injury? Injury-induced weight gain. Injury may lead to <laughs> hospital food, but also it leads to antibiotics and sedentary time while the injury heals. Talk to a good physical therapist about exercising regularly while you're recovering, and to a good dietitian. I'm being a bit what? facetious here, about eating whole grains oh, and heavens. chocolate. How many times have we read, <laughs> how many times have we read that chocolate or cocoa is anti-inflammatory? Cocoa tastes horrible. Do you ever, when you were a kid, break into mom's cupboard, she had those bars that mm -hmm. looked like Hershey bars, and you open one of them and you speed <laughs> off to the living room, you eat a little bit, poo! It's coca, coca, or what, what is? Uh, cacao. 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 Yeah, our friend Greg says cacao. It tastes horrible, but it does have anti-inflammatory. <laughs> what price? Anti-inflammatory. It's not chocolate, but somehow the dietitian community picked that up and said, you know, a little bit of chocolate's fine. Uh, and whole grains, don't eat regular grains, eat whole grains. <laughs> Those are also vulnerable to injury while they're being siloed, and they can grow mycotoxins. As a matter of fact, they do, many of them do, and we're eating those, and the mycotoxins themselves can injure us. I think that this question is a really insightful question because a lot of people are not so in touch with their bodies that they even realize that, whoa, I'm gaining weight, but they recognize that it's after I took the antibiotic or after I took the prednisone or after I had an injury and I was lying around lethargic for a long time. Yeah. I think that when you start to recognize, really pay attention to what you're eating, what you're taking, and you can start to see, you know what? When I eat a little more fat and, uh, and, and far fewer carbs, <laughs> believe it or not, I start losing weight. Yeah. I, when, I, when I stay off the medication, when I used to reach for this certain, like acetaminophen or something, mm -hmm for a headache, and now I'm reaching for some of the spices that we talked about earlier, I'm not gaining weight, I'm not lethargic for the next five weeks. Yeah. A lot of people don't recognize, in fact, they, they're taking these medicines so often and they're having side effects so often that they think that these side effects are just a normal part of life. Well, guess what, they're not. Remember Alyssa? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Alyssa took a stand on this, vaccine-induced injury. That's true, yeah. Yes, it may be rare, especially when you're vaccinating every child that's born a dozen times by the time they're one year old or so forth. And far be it from me, Kyle, or this show to make that judgment call for you. 
We now have Google searches. We can look at the good, the bad, and the ugly about vaccines. And we're big people. We can make that decision with the assistance of a physician who's been trained in this. But what happens if it was your five-week-old that was injured by vaccine? When we get back, Dr. Mitchell and Don Corridor are going to discuss that very point. Then I called back a couple hours later. He's still crying. He's not blinking. Okay, let's watch his tongue, make sure it doesn't swell. You need to be an educated consumer to find the best probiotic. Dr. O'Hara stands out in its quality and consistent effects. I'm pharmacist Dr. Ross Pelton, and I only recommend Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. It provides live beneficial bacteria and nourishes your own native probiotics. This supports long-term digestive comfort and a healthy immune system. I believe in Dr. O'Hara's lasting results. It takes guts to stay healthy. Which of my books fit you? Can you cook your way to wellness? Can you eat your way to wellness? That's the name of a couple of books I've written, Cooking Your Way to Good Health or Eating Your Way to Good Health. Loaded with recipes, whether you want to follow the phase one diet or the phase two diet, please your families with good tasting foods all put together in these two great recipe books. When I wake up in the morning, usually it's so tight and it's so painful when I wake up. Two years ago, I've been watching it, learning all the information that I need to find out and about the sickness, about cancer. I took some, some supplements that was recommended by Doug to take it like uh, beta-glucan, NSC, beta-glucan. But since I changed my diet, it's getting to disappear, the pain. And every time I wake up, it's, it's more, it's more, I can easily uh, open my hands and it's no pain. Sometimes it's hard for them like to understand what you what you're trying and what you're sharing about these things. And I said, well, sometimes I refer them to go to the website, and I said you can get all the information about antifungal that fungus linked to cancer. And sometimes some people they kind of like skeptic about it, but I keep telling them you just go there and you get all the information that you're gonna find about cancer that linked to cancer. Why don't you try the diet and change your diet and take all the supplements for antifungal and I'm sure maybe it's gonna help you too. So producer John Miller hands me this uh, segment and he says, in four minutes, I want you to talk about vaccines. Right, John? And here we are. <laughs> Dr. Roby Mitchell and his better half, Dawn, join us today. Thank you both Thank you. for coming in. Dawn, when Jason was five weeks old, your son, he got a vaccine. Right. Do tell, what happened? He got the DPT vaccine, yeah. and within an hour, high pitch scream, 12 hours. Which had never occurred prior to Never. That. Mm -mm. Okay, so you're in the car probably driving home with him. Uh, we were already home. Okay. We were already home, and, uh, you know, so what was the crying? Uh, you know, they say that's right. normal, yep. a little fever, <laughs> give him some Tylenol. Yeah. Um, but it was really when I noticed he wasn't blinking. Wow. Mm. So he's like in shock or yeah. something. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you call the doctor. Call the doctor, they said, normal, just watch him. Then I called back a couple hours later, he's still crying, he's not blinking. Okay, let's watch his tongue, make sure it doesn't swell. Oh, your heart has to be thumping uh, out of its chamber. Yeah. And this is why I asked Dr. Mitchell to come in also, to kind of go over this with us, because you've probably given a lot of vaccines, you've made it through your PhD degree and your MD degree, uh, you know a lot about these things, probably atypical right? Kids who get DPT vaccines don't have that happen often. When they do, we worry about it. Adverse reactions and immunizations, Roby, where, where, where are we on that? So adverse reactions happen for two reasons. One reason is that vaccines in just the course of vaccines, they lower the immune system. So now we're already in this environment where we are breathing in viruses, bacteria, and uh, uh, fungus, right, and uh, in and on us, 10 times more than what our normal cells are. So we're in a, a perilous situation there. So if you open a door, right, by giving the vaccines, particularly when you do it multiple times, then that 
gives access to all of these critters. So that's one reaction that can happen. So people, you know, I mean, the uh, Guillain-Barre, right. those type of things, right? Those are immunological uh, disorders. So when you take the flu shot and you get the flu, it's not because there was flu virus in the flu shot, it's because it lowered your immune system and all these other viruses then gained access. The other thing is the chemical preservatives that are in the, the vaccine, right? Those have a, can give a chemical reaction for people that have a genetic predisposition, right, to have those. That's why some people can get an exemption mm. um, if they have an allergy to egg, you know, or some of these right. other things. Right. So those two reasons, right, or make vaccines prone to give reactions in some people. Obviously, you know, there are millions of kids that get vaccines and don't have a reaction, but what we want to make people aware of, which unfortunately, as in Don's case, you know, the physicians and uh, other administrators don't make you aware of, is there's the possibility. Of, uh -huh. of a reaction, right. and it might be the adjuvant, it might be something else. <laughs> I'll never forget, Don, when Roby came in here four or five years ago, and you had everybody rolling. It's on YouTube, by the way, we've gotten 65, 70,000 hits. When you read the package mm -hmm. insert from the flu vaccine, Right, uh, you know, being a physician since 87, right, and uh, having uh, told all these people to get flu shots, we had that H1N1 scare in 2009, and nurses were asking me, should they get the flu shot? At first I said, yes, right, just off the top of my head, and then I said, well, let me just take a look at this thing, I've never read it, and it said right there, hidden in, pl in, in uh, plain sight, <laughs> that the flu vaccine does not protect you from the flu, right? And uh, so, yeah, so we do have to be careful. So it is always a buyer beware type of interface that you have to go in, you know, with uh, mm -hmm. medicine in general. Yeah, exactly. Jason's okay. Jason's okay. Second year of college, he's going to be an engineer. That's right. Really good to see you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. You're very Really good to see you. <laughs> we didn't answer the question for you. Should you immunize? That's between you, your husband, your wife, maybe your children, and your doctor. Don't go away. More of Know the Cause right around the corner. My friend, clinical nutritionist Marty Whittakin, every year she puts on a health fest right here in Plano, Texas, half an hour from the airport. Come see me. I get to speak at 9 a.m. on cancer and fungus. Duh, what else would I be speaking on? But other people are speaking on holistic dentistry, pain relief, stem cells, brain health, etc. And there's going to be over 100 exhibit booths. What a way to spend a Saturday. Go to naturalhealthfest.com. My friend Marty and I will be there. I look forward to seeing you. Which of my books fits you? How many people do we know suffering with kidney diseases, skin problems, postpartum depression? All those topics are covered along with the phase one, phase two diet and natural and prescriptive antifungals in the book, The Fungus Link, volume three. You know, I take a lot of supplements. I mean, I yeah. take NSC every day. I take olive leaf if I yep. get a little sniffly. The, the advertisers here have great products, uh, yeah, Prevagen, et cetera. The take home message today was sometimes supplements are necessary to offset symptoms. Medications are made for that yep. reason. But if you're not eating well, you probably need a lot of medications. Absolutely. And if you're not eating well, the supplements are not going to do half as good as if you're eating the right diet. Yeah, good message on today's show. Thank you for watching. Roby. I know. Good to see him back. Good awesome. things to think about. Immunizations, vaccines. That's for you and your doctor and your child to discuss. <laughs> Thank see you for you coming. Later. You bet.